All right, so when we set the tripod up, um, obviously it's variable height, but we want to try to stay as perpendicular to whatever it is we're taking a, a video of as possible. So we're going to keep it pretty low. Okay, so we're going to start with the 25 millimeter lens, figure out our distance input into the laptop, and then see if we need to zoom in any further uh, to pinpoint an anomaly. Where we're placing the tripod is really based on where it's convenient and simple for you and safe for you inside your plant. So it's not necessarily a specific distance you need to be from the unit. Uh, the lenses will help you zoom in as you need to uh, tripod placement other than trying to be as perpendicular to the unit as possible is really about where it makes the most sense inside your plant. Um, so at this point we've got a 25 millimeter lens on. We're just going to take a simple calculation with the distance finder um, that happens to be video, which is really nice. Uh, and we're about a 1.5 meters from the unit, so that'll be an input to the laptop to help us take uh, proper measurements. All right, so uh, now we're gonna set up communications from the camera itself into our laptop. Uh, so there's a very specific cable. Okay, so now at this point, we should be all prepared to get the software up and running and start taking uh, taking some motion amplification video, as long as it's just the screen. All right, so when we first put the camera together and throw a lens on it and start taking uh, a look at what the screen looks like, you may have to do some adjustments to the lens. Uh, those include both aperture opening as well as focus. Uh, so first we're going to adjust our aperture and get it where we've got some contrast between our lights and darks. Um, and then we will adjust our focus um, to bring the unit into focus. All right, so as we noticed in the picture, we weren't really seeing the entire unit. And we want to start by looking at the entire unit. We may want to focus in on a very specific area later to zoom in. But for now, we want to see the entire unit. So we're going to swap the, the 25 lens out for the 12 and a half so that we can get a broader picture um, so let's do that now and then we'll adjust our focus and aperture again. Okay, so now that we got the lens all set up, the software is really simple to use. Put in our distance. Put in our focal length of the lens we chose. At this point, there's not really anything else to do. There are some more advanced settings associated with frame rate. You can do uh, brightness changes if you have to, although you're better off doing that at the lens with the aperture changes. Um, so once we're all set here, we're just going to hit the record button. So as you can see in this standard video before we hit the record, this unit is running now and there's not really any obvious vibration. It actually looks pretty smooth. So let's hit the record button and see what we get. Again, once the recording's done, we've got an option to save it. We've got an option to go immediately um, to the motion amplification application inside the software so we can view it um, as motion amplification. We're going to save it for now because we're going to take more than one video. Okay, so now we have our initial video. We're going to take a look at exactly what's happening from a motion perspective. Again, this is incredibly intuitive to use. Um, there's a couple of sliders here. One is for frame rate frames per second how fast is the video going to loop it'll continually loop if that's what you have it set on um, there's a setting right here if i unclick this it's not looping if i click it it's looping on the right hand side is how fast it's going to cycle through that three seconds remember it's three seconds filmed on a high speed camera so it's it's a it's a much greater distance if you watch it in one frame per second um, and i can also adjust how much motion i see now this is kind of a critical component because you wanna see the motion enough to start pinpointing where you have an issue, but not so much that it starts um, graining the video and making the video unable to see. So we're gonna just start taking a look at our video right now. Um, we're at like two frames per second on the speed. Again, if I increase the amplification, the video gets a little bit more grainy, but you can see more movement in the video. If I reduce the amplification, the video gets a little cleaner, but you see less motion in the video. This is a basic demo unit. And, and what we're seeing is the actuation of the piston as it's happening. You're seeing the entire unit 
rock, right? I mean, it's not bolted down to the ground. So you could say this is a dampening issue, a mechanical looseness issue from soft foot. Um, these are issues that are common out in, out in today's world. Um, not necessarily a component issue from a tra power transmission perspective. All right, so at this point, we are going to take uh, a close up of the shaft itself. So right now we're getting the speed of that reciprocation. All right, so now we're going to take a recording of the shaft movement itself. When we go inside and do the software demo, we're going to bring this up and do a much cleaner look at this. So it has a very specific function for shaft inspection, and that's what we're taking a look at now. Hey, if you would like your product reviewed by Reliability Expo, contact us at ask at reliabilityx.com. We'll set up a time where we can either come onto your site or you can ship us your, your product or give us access to your software and we can do a product review for your organization as well. Contact us at ask at reliabilityx.com.